I am here to bring you greetings from the rest of the Widener faculty, especially from the faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences who played such a significant role in your education. Yes, I am referring to those foundational courses such as chemistry, anatomy and physiology, and statistics about which you have such fond memories. <laughs> but those arts and science courses also include English literature and composition and other courses in humanities, philosophy, psychology, and sociology that have hopefully helped prepare you to be generally educated persons who can appreciate the complexity and diversity of human experiences that you will be daily encountering as nurses. The faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences and the rest of the Widener faculty wish you a wonderfully fulfilling professional and personal journey as you venture beyond Widener. To the families and friends of today's award recipients, I thank you for supporting these women and men in reaching another educational milestone in their journey of lifelong learning. For everyone in this audience, this is a time of celebration. It is my hope that today's Nightingale Ceremony, Saturday's commencement exercises, and other graduation parties will make this occasion truly memorable for you. In closing, I would like to recognize one member of the BSN graduating class for a notable academic distinction. Ms. Jenna Jackson has managed to achieve a perfect 4.0 GPA over her four years of study. Jenna, please stand to be recognized as one of this year's valedictorians of the class of 2017. On behalf of the entire university faculty, I congratulate all of the soon-to-be graduates assembled here today. Savor these moments of celebration. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wilhite. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Mary Francis, this year's Nightingale Ceremony speaker. I will summarize a few highlights from her distinguished career. Dr. Mary Francis joins us today as an advanced practice nurse and a national and international leader in trauma nursing. Dr. Francis graduated from Helene Fold School of Nursing in 1983 with an associate's degree in nursing, Thomas Jefferson University in 1988 with a bachelor's degree in science in nursing at the University of Pennsylvania in 1992 with a master's of nursing and in trauma and special focus. Returned to the University of Pennsylvania in 2005 for a post-master certificate in acute care nurse practitioning. And then in 2014, Dr. Francis defended her research on gun violence and achieved a PhD in nursing at Widener University. Dr. Francis has worked as a staff nurse at Cooper University Medical Center, advanced to assistant nurse manager, and also worked as a nursing educator at Cooper University Hospital. In 1993, she accepted her first teaching position at Helene Fold School of Nursing. She began teaching at Widener University in 2005 with a focus on undergraduate education. She has presented nationally and internationally on the topic of nursing education and gun violence. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you all Dr. Mary Francis. I am honored to stand before you today and speak to you for one last lecture. <laughs> you are a very special class to me and I am very fond of all of you. This will, not, this will not be 70 slides of GI content, <laughs> and there will not be Socratic method. Today, I'm going to talk to you about stories. As a nurse, you will have so many stories. Stories that can make you laugh, stories to make you cry, and stories that will provide valuable lessons. 
I am so thankful that I was part of your nursing education story. Parents, boyfriends, girlfriends, grandparents, siblings, you must be so proud of your graduates. They have worked so hard and sacrificed so much to complete the program of nursing to become a registered nurse. I feel as if I know all of you so personally, having spent two years teaching you patho and med surge. Today, I want to share with you some of my story that you do not know. Yes, I am your assistant professor, but I am also a trauma nurse practitioner. I take care of critically ill trauma patients. Some have fallen from ladders, rooftops, trees, car accident victims, and a very large population of patients have been injured due to gun violence. When I began my coursework for my dissertation, my mentors, Dr. Shirley Drayton Brooks, Dr. Barbara Patterson, Dr. Rose Schwartz, and Dr. Lynn Kelly advised me to find something I felt passionate about. It was very good advice. And as you begin your careers in nursing, find some way to maintain your passion. I have been a nurse for 31 years and a teacher for 24, and I am still passionate about my work. My passion for my dissertation was the young gunshot victim. I work in Camden with a high gun violence rate. I've cared for hundreds of gunshot victims in my career. What I was seeing and experiencing at the bedside was not what the general public was reading about or seeing in the news. Through dis discussion with my dissertation committee, we realized that should be my focus for my research. Although so much research had been done on the issue of gun violence, there had not been so much done about the perspective from the victim. I followed my passion. I interviewed the victims of gun violence, and my research question was, what is the story of being a victim of gun violence from the perspective of the victim? I listened to the victims. Listen to your patients. Truly, that is what will allow you to have greater understanding of their situations. Through their stories, I discovered the hopelessness that they were experiencing, a life filled with everyday violence, poverty, incarceration, lack of employable skills. They felt abandoned by the pillars of their community, from their schools, their government, and social activities. The scientific method of studying a story is called a narrative inquiry. The telling of a story allows an individual to reveal certain facts about their lives. It is in the telling of the story that we learn about that individual. The story can enhance certain details. Think about the fisherman describing his catch. Or it can neglect to tell you certain details. Think about your version you told your parents about Maggie's on the night of the senior. <laughs> the story is the viewpoint of the storyteller. As nurses, you will become part of so many of your patient's stories. All of you already have patient stories from clinical, from your own personal experience. The nurse was so amazing, or I was really disappointed I never even saw the nurse. Just recently, Jimmy Kimmel shared his story about the birth of his son, Billy. In his very personal, passionate story, he shared how his son was born in the delivery room with many physicians and nurses giving amazing care. The birth was completed, the baby was weighed and measured, and later at the newborn assessment, it was the nurse who, do, who noted that the coloring of the baby was not proficient. The baby was determined to have tetralogy of Fallot, an escalated care, and a cardiac intervention. It was the nurse who, shared, who saved that baby. My story. I am the ninth child of Cass and Jim Rafferty. Six boys, three girls. A large Irish Catholic family, I was born and raised in Gloucester City, a small blue collar town in South Jersey. I was raised to love my family, have faith in God, and to be good to my neighbors. I married my high school sweetheart, Brian Francis. We have been married for 34 years. We have five daughters, Sarah, Maureen, Jessica, Cassie, <laughs> and Aaron. I have one son-in-law, John Cunningham, and two grandsons, John and Brian. My heart is full and happy. June 16, 1978, 
is a significant date in my story. My brother Yu worked for DuPont in uh, Deepwater. An alarm sounded on his shift to alert the employees that a, a trailer was in danger of exploding. My brother went in to alert his two friends. They got out, he did not. He was burned over 85% of his body and his safety suit melted into his skin. Yui was 26 years old. He was married to his wife, Kitty. They had a six-year-old daughter, Eileen, and Kitty was three months pregnant. I spent the summer of 78 in Ch Chester Cruiser's burn center watching seriously burned patients. I was 16 years old. I watched the activities of the burn unit. I watched the nurses give amazing care. It was then I became inspired to be a nurse a nurse who took care of patients in times of their greatest tragedy. Yui died on August 26, 1978, from complications from his burns. Kitty gave birth on November 5, 1978, to a baby girl named Sharon with no husband at her side. The unthinkable happened on September 17, 1979, 13 months after the death of Yui, in the early mornings, my brother Michael was killed in a car accident. He was 24 years old, married to Kathy, and they had a two-year-old son, Neil. I learned that sometimes there's no limit to the amount of pain and sorrow a family must endure. It is in those times a family needs as much nursing support and care as your patient does. I learned not to shy away from people in times of their greatest need, but to reach out and comfort them. My story has some very sad life experiences, but from those experiences, I have gained compassion for others. I learned how powerful kindness can be in a time of need. It inspired me to become a better person, a better nurse, a better teacher. We take our life experiences and we have the opportunity to learn from them. Sharon's story ended when she was 14 years old and she took her own life. She had just graduated from eighth grade. She was an honor student, appeared happy, well-adjusted, well-loved. I learned sometimes we have no answers. In closing, class of 2017, I am so proud of all of you. You have worked through some really tough times, and I personally know that some of you have also experienced great grief in your young lives. But you can use that experience to be even more compassionate to your patients, your families, and your very own loved ones. You will set forth to have your own amazing nursing stories. Yikes. <laughs> be brave and be present for your patients. One of my favorite stories is Little Woman because of my five daughters. Mary Louise Alcott states, do not be afraid of the storms because you have learned to sail your ships. Class of 2017, I know you can sail your ships. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Francis. Your words are of inspiration are most welcome. Please accept this token of our gratitude. <laughs> now Dean Zurich will introduce the School of Nursing faculty and, and staff and announce the Class of 2017 School of Nursing Awards. A description of the awards can be found in the program. Award recipients, please stand to be recognized and then remain standing. We ask that the audience please hold your applause until all of the award recipients have been recognized.